sun is still up, so I feel very productive starting my chest day now rather than at like, you know, nine o'clock later tonight. Uh, I am in a bit of a habit of doing later lifts, uh, probably just because I like lifting later, just a little bit, maybe, but in a, in more of an actual, maybe reasonable, well, you know, reason is at the end of the day, you gotta remember, that's when I'm like the most carved up and fed, so, you know, maybe subconsciously I feel like I might have a better lift if I wait until like at least maybe five or so or later before I, you know, come to the gym and do whatever I got to do. Just because by then I will have gotten in, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of grams of carbs, nice and hydrated, you know, every buzzword you can think of in terms of good preparation for the lift. But eh, this is about right. I will say I definitely would not want to lift first thing in the morning. Like if that's you, and just the only way you can get the gym into your schedule is morning lift and then rest of the rest of your day. I'm not gonna say it doesn't work. I just don't love it. That's uh, I like to at least get a couple of meals in me so I feel kind of more energized. And then not even that. It's like when you wake up, you're so stiff. That's I don't know. I mean, I'm not knocking morning lifters. I'm just saying I don't really love it. But plan for chest. Man, this gym has been nerfed. Uh, no more Smith machines. And they used to have two really old school ones, which were like fucking badass. Like, I mean, pretty much my favorite Smith machine I've ever used. Just real, like hardly any counterweight, super smooth. Just it may as well have just been a bar on rails. I mean, the bare minimum necessary, which I think that's the best way to go about it, you know? Like, I've tried a lot of machines in my, I was about to say in my day, like I'm a fucking old man. I've tried a lot of machines, and, you know, for the most part, the more complicated, the, the less I really care about it, you know? Like, with plate-loaded stuff, once it gets into, like, multiple levers playing into each other, it's, uh, it just kind of loses me, right? Like, the hammer strength shit, they know what they're doing. Uh, you know, I haven't tried a lot of it, but some of the prime machines, the ones where the weight is loaded on like three different pins, uh, I'm not going to say that I, I can't really have a really good opinion on those because I haven't used them too much, but I mean, you know, it's hard to beat the basics, right? Back, cable rows, pull downs, maybe a machine row with like two machine arms and then, you know, pullovers. That's a pretty sick back day. Chest. You know, incline pressing, barbell, dumbbell, Smith machine, maybe a hammer strength press style, and then, you know, pec deck and cables. That's, you know, there's no, uh, like, sure, a lot of kind of exercise. I mean, not every fitness coach is a bodybuilding coach, but a lot of bodybuilding coaches, they sort of hype up like, oh, you know, we're going to have you doing, well, eh, maybe not bodybuilders, mainly just basic fitness like a basic fitness coach is going to be like, oh, you know, we've got a ton of, I got a ton of new, new, uh, new movements that you've never done. I mean, it's going to hit your muscles in ways they've never been hit. Uh, and then the dude has you doing like shoulder press with the safety squat bar where like the safety squat bar is on the rack. And then the guy is just bending the lever. If you know what I'm talking about, right? Just, there's no need to reinvent the wheel here. Now, I'm not saying there's no room for improvement. You know, sometimes I see new machines come out, and I'm like, holy shit, that looks pretty fucking cool. But a lot of the basic shit, you know, just make sure it's smooth. Make sure it doesn't break. I think that's where you should be putting most of your engineering effort. And you gotta remember, I do have a slight say in that. That's, uh, if you're, if you're curious... That's what I'm doing all this school shit for. Not necessarily for, but like, you know, I'm in all sorts of material science, you know, talking about how systems buckle, just all sorts of physics and whatever. So if that adds to my credibility on what I'm saying about the machines, then cool. But plan for chest, you know, heavy pressing, probably barbell, 
I might dabble in some dumbbell afterwards. Uh, this gym, the dumbbells only go up to 130 though, but I haven't done dumbbell in like months. So I maybe, it probably wouldn't be in my best interest to try to jump straight to like as heavy as I could go on dumbbells. Because you gotta remember, if I'm not used to the movement, or if I haven't done it for a while, then loading up a fuck ton of weight, not in my best interest. I can almost guarantee I'm not gonna be ready for it. Like, I've gone through periods of time where I, I had to stop squatting. Like, my adductor was kind of fucked up. Not like really injured, but to the point where it was kind of flaring up. Didn't feel very good. So, you know, two, three months no squatting. And then, sure, my strength was there. But the first few sets of heavy squats, I could tell I was extra wobbly just because my form was kind of off. You know, just because you were a fucking heater on your uh, high school baseball team doesn't mean that after a few year hiatus, you should just th try to you know, try to rip a, I don't know any other baseball slang, just, just a fucking fastball out of nowhere. Even though you might have the technique and you sort of have a little bit of that muscle memory Make sure to ease back into this sort of shit, you know. So really what I'm trying to say there is if you haven't done, well, really anything. If you haven't done a specific thing, gym related, for a while, maybe take your time easing back into it, you know. And don't just fucking, don't just floor it. Is this lady going to go? I'm being nice. Oh, yeah, there she goes. She, she saw me. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't squatted for a while... Maybe don't try to jump straight to five plates and, you know, break your spine in half. If you haven't done really heavy flat bench for a while, maybe don't jump straight for your one rep max. You know, maybe he's into it. He's a little bit of caution. That's all, uh, no, I mean, not that that's groundbreaking advice, but, you know, just something to say. So I can feel my beta alanine is starting to tingle me from the, uh, from the hostility amped. I've, uh, I've been on a fucking caffeine craze in a way like I've been doing like 500 for the past like few lifts uh, not for the shoulder day of course I mean there's just no need but yeah I might want to do a few days of lower just because you know with caffeine you kind of get into a little bit of a I don't want to say downward spiral but you can sort of feed into this <laughs> sort of feedback loop where it's like oh I want to take this much Okay, now I'm used to it. Eh, well, I, maybe I'll take a little bit extra for this chest day, just for extra intensity. Oh, well, you know, I kind of want to feel, uh, you know. Look, you don't want to end up being a dude and doing a thousand milligrams per lift to feel something. You know, I see memes like that all the time. Not necessary. So, honestly, I think if you've been in the five, six hundred milligram range for a few weeks, maybe try a week at 200. That's what I'm going to do probably, I don't know, soon-ish. Not today, of course. I did, uh, you know, two and a half scoops of the Amped. So I'm fucking a little jittery. Eh. Actually, I mean, that's not true. I don't really have a huge caffeine... Or I guess I probably have a good caffeine tolerance. I'm not sure if it's maybe because I got... I mean, fucking everybody's got ADHD brain. But I don't get, like... I don't get, like, shakes or anything like that. My, um... Uh, my dad will get that sometimes. So, of course, we've got the pre-workout at the house. So, you know, whenever he does, whatever he's doing, he goes, uh, he's got like a nightly push-up routine. Not as crazy as me, but you know what I'm saying. And he'll tell me that he was like fucking kind of shaking a little bit. So, not that there's really a point there, but whatever. So, let's fast forward about probably 45 minutes from the time that we pull into the gym and get warmed up. And there should be a fucking gnarly pump at the end of it. So let's fucking get in there. Hope it's not too busy. I'm properly warm. I've done my you know, set of one plate, set of two plates, like two reps of three plates just to see how it feels. I think let's just stick to three and go fucking nuts.
One more, same weight. Not bad, but let's move on. <laughs> I'm waiting for a different chess machine, but I'll do one set here just as like an in-between set. Not that it's gonna be bad. Like this isn't fluff work, but I'm only doing this machine because the one I really want is taken. I'm trying to work on retracting my shoulders when I press to get my front dots out of it. But let's go to the machine I really want. Now, here's the chest press I really wanted to do. <sighs> Let's repeat that a few times. I'm gonna go a little lighter on this one. Kind of focus more so on the squeeze. And honestly, this machine feels fucking cool. It's almost like the feeling I get on the top of a rep of dumbbell press is at the top. I don't feel like I'm resting. Like, even though my arms are totally straight, I'm just squeezing the fuck out of my chest. So I think one more here, do some flies and that could be it. Let's do some flies next. I don't love this pack fly because as a machine, it's a little bit on the lighter side. I wish it was heavier, but after like five sets of heavy pressing, this will feel pretty good, even though it's a weight I can manage. So kind of the same mentality with the last chest presses, really gonna try to squeeze. And this is what I'm trying to focus on. I've been trying to work on this for a while, but it's kind of tricky, for me, right? So my front delts are very overdeveloped because I've got a habit of being really hunched over. So when I do my flies, I kind of do this, and my front delts are coming into play. I don't do it this bad, but kind of like that. And then same thing with pressing. I'm doing a lot of front delt. I'm trying to pull my shoulders back. So that the only thing working is my chest. I'm having trouble with it, but I am improving it a little bit. I can tell today, even though five sets of really heavy pressing, I don't feel my front delts too much. A little bit but not too bad. So I think one or two here and we're down.
Let's fucking call it there. Chest complete. All right, so this was after that last set, like immediately. My go-to pose down spot was taken. So relegated to the locker room. Not ideal. Obviously, it's kind of weird, but luckily there's nobody over here. Of course, if somebody was changing right behind me, I wouldn't bust out the tripod. Come on, that's fucked. Oh, so. Let's just pose down while I catch my fucking breath. What's going on? <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, you tell me. Are we pumped or fucking pumped? <laughs> Holy shit. This is a solid ass chest day. Whew. Nothing else to do but go home and eat. Let's get out of here. Now that was a good chest day by I'd say any lifter's measure for sure. I'm definitely trying to be a bit more, maybe not methodical, but well, yeah, I'd say methodical is kind of the right word. I'm really trying to get my reps a bit more Maybe not productive per se, but more chest biased. Because uh, I can definitely tell my front delts are really overpowering and taking over in a lot of my heavier pressing movements, uh, which I have been trying to fix, but it's tricky for me, man. I think I probably need to stretch because I'm sure, like, even just sitting here, like, my shoulders aren't just naturally, like, far back in a good, in good posture. You know, I'm nice and fucking hunched. Not nice and hunched, but, you know, I'm hunched. Which, in terms of pressing and chest isolation, it's not awesome for me. So, um, on that set of machine presses, where I was um, the, the black machine, not the plate-loaded one, that one felt pretty good, because I was really trying to, like, like, pull my scapulas together, if you know what I'm talking about. Like, pull my shoulders back and get all chest. But kind of subconsciously, maybe this is just the way I learned to lift. But like I kind of have a natural tendency to move my shoulders back and forth too. Which is something I'm trying to work on. But today's chest day, pretty chest isolated. And I can kind of say that for sure because I know that some days when I do a lot of hammer strength press incline. Or even sometimes incline smith. Uh, and then some cable flies too. I can feel that my front delts have gotten a serious amount of work, like where they're, they're burning straight up, as though I did a bunch of like shoulder press. So that's, uh, that's one thing I'm trying to work on there in terms of my chest training. So the more chest days where I can only feel my chest, you know, being fully pumped up compared to like, you know, my front delts too, the better. Right? And that's why even on the days that I do do shoulders, and they're already kind of ahead of the game compared to my arms, I'm not going to do any extra front delt work because my front delts get enough activation from all the incline and regular pressing that I do because I naturally have a tendency to work them. But even if you don't, 90% of lifters, their front delts are going to be more developed than their rear and side. So, you know, it's just the nature of the beast when it comes to shoulders. Like, you got to remember... Even on movements where you're not really hitting your front delts, they're gonna come into play, right? Even unintentionally. You're doing a set of dumbbell curls, right? Think about this. When the dumbbell's at your side, completely like vertical, you know, your shoulders aren't doing anything. They might be working a little bit with your traps just to, you know, hold on to the weight, but they're not doing much. But once you do that curl and the weight moves in front of your body, right? Technically, if you're kind of looking at the mechanics and forces of the system or whatever else your front delts are keeping your forearm or your upper arm in the same spot because if they didn't come into play at all 
then your dumbbell would be right next to your side like you were doing drag curls. I don't know if you can really visualize what I'm saying, but main idea, your front delts get worked a lot. So you're probably better off you know, spamming your side and rear delts. That's, um, that's one thing that I started doing early on. Like I haven't done shoulder pressing, uh, at least not on a consistent basis. I do do a couple of sets just every so often, kind of just for the fuck of it. Like every few months I'll do a few sets of like machine shoulder press. But consistently and heavy, I haven't done any shoulder pressing for at least probably three years. Maybe, yeah, yeah, probably about three years or so. Uh, and again, it's just because, you know, for me, I've got a bit of a tendency to overwork my front delts. So just a little bit of insight there into my approach with uh, my front delt slash chest training. But chest feels pretty good. Uh, I'm definitely not like at a hundred percent compared to before I pulled it like a month ago, but it's pretty good. So I don't foresee it being an issue as these, you know, pretty hard and heavy sets progress, but it is something to watch out for in the few months after tweaking something or pulling something. If you pulled it pretty good, I'm not talking like hospital level, like that's its own thing. But if you like pulled your chest and you know it, and you had to stop that chest day, you wait a few weeks and it starts to come back, you know, you start getting into your normal workouts. Definitely keep an eye on that because retweaking an injury, I'd say is much more likely than having a new one. So even though you could feel pretty good, uh, let's say maybe one day I don't get an awesome amount of sleep and I don't get awesome hydration. You know, I'm kind of dehydrated. Maybe I'm a little bit underfed and I go into a heavy chest day. And, you know, I'm just a little more stiff and I jump into heavy weight, which, you know, I might feel comfortable with, but that little part of me could still be compromised to the point where it could get hurt again. So that's, that's part of the reason why with chest, I do a pretty, maybe not intricate, but kind of a lengthy warm up. I don't always show it just because it's kind of, I mean, it's sort of repetitive, but before I even did that first you know, set of incline bench with one plate to warm up there. I was hanging around the cables for like five minutes or like six minutes or so doing some tricep activation with some single arm pushdowns, some rear delt kind of rotator cuff work like this. Like if the cable's in front of me doing shit like this, getting my rotator cuff going, a little bit of rear delts and then some cable flies just to get some chest activation. So I've said this before, but I'll just, I'll just run through the rant again. Chest is the day which requires the most warming up for me and I'd say for most people uh, you know back there's not much that I need to work for back like my warm up for if I'm about to start a back day with like lat pull downs the warm up is just light lat pull downs and gradually increasing the weight like I'm never I never feel like my rotator cuffs are at risk or like my forearms need to be warmed up it's like for some movements the warm up is just the exercise that you're going to do but lighter Right? Same thing with like arms. When I warm up for tricep pushdowns, all I do is light tricep pushdowns and then work up and wait until I'm at my working weight and then start the working sets. Even legs, you know, for hamstrings, I hang out on the hamstring curl, lightish weight, go heavier, go heavier, get exposed to it, get warm, and then start the working weight. But chest, maybe it's just me. And I guess if you've got bulletproof shoulders, then you're good. But chest is where I'm probably the most, I've had the most frequent like tweaks uh, and not like muscle pulls, but like, you know, doing, and this could just be because I had bad form, but doing incline with my shoulders or my elbows a little bit too flared out and like having some crunchy rotator, like to the point where for me to even do reps, I've heard it so bad where like going down, I can feel it like shit fucking hurts, you know? But ever since I've started implementing a lot of rotator cuff warm-ups, before I start any kind of pressing, I haven't had a shoulder issue. I have not had a shoulder issue for many months. Many freaking months. And I definitely attribute it to you know, warming them up efficiently. Or maybe not efficiently, but effectively. How about that? So, good chest day. Really fucking good pump. I was almost a little bit surprised. Maybe it was just because I haven't posed down in that locker room spot before so maybe I looked different because you got to remember 
like the lighting and the mirror space and like whatever, it's going to play a serious role in your like perception of yourself. So don't get too upset if maybe one day your pump looks a little scrappier than the other day. And don't get too much of a big head if one day you try a new mirror spot or you turn on some fancy lighting and you're like, holy shit, oh, this is fucking crazy. Because you got to remember, when you're pumped up, that's not how you really look. That's how you look pumped, which is cool. But, you know, don't forget to add that pumped part. I think that's sort of the classic uh, mis under maybe not misunderstanding, but it's sort of a classic thought process of becoming accustomed to how you look at your peak, right? Like me, fully pumped up with the fucking chest veins coming out, especially when I'm extra lean and like there's I got tricep striations and all sorts of craziness. That's fucking killer, right? But I don't get upset when I wake up in the morning and I look at myself in the mirror. And there's no, like, shoulder striations, there's no pump, there's no nothing. You know, because I understand that's just a temporary state of being. You know? And I think that's a pretty healthy way to go about it, right? If you can be accustomed to your normal state, like how you look when you're just walking around like a dude, uh, or, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you look at yourself in the mirror, shirtless, zero pump. When that's your normal, and you, that's how you see yourself normal, and then you get to see yourself in the gym fully pumped, and you're like, holy shit, this is badass. This is cool. This is a peek into the future if I keep continuing what I'm doing. And I think that's a better way to go about it. Because you, I, and if this is you, you got to rewire your brain. Because think of that situation I just said there and compare it to the guy who, like, rather than seeing himself pumped and thinking, dude, holy fuck, I'm pumped up. Right? Let's say when he sees himself pumped, he's not very enthusiastic about it. And when he sees himself unpumped, He's like, oh, what the fuck? Oh, I look like shit. Uh, oh, dude. Look, I'm not saying that you can't look like shit, right? Like, you can have a bit too much body fat on you. You can be kind of out of shape. But you shouldn't be saying that to yourself. Like, even if, you know, we took a dude, skinny fat, not really a huge lifter, uh, definitely not where he wants to be in terms of his fitness goals. Right? And that's that's like an objective truth we can kind of get behind. Like he wants to improve, right? Do not beat yourself up in the process. Like, I I mean, I can't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me, at least. To think constantly, like, oh, I look like shit. Oh, uh, yeah, but, well, my triceps look like total shit, you know. Yeah, my legs are pretty small. I mean, I got, fu I got shit legs. I... What are you doing? Like, I mean, think about this legit. Are you, are you, is that going to hype you up? Is that going to make you excited to train them more? Like, it's just such a depressing outlook, man. Like, don't think about, and I know this is so cliche, it's so, like, stupid. Like, oh, well, always think about the positive in things, not the negative. But, I mean, there's a reason why cliches are cliches. It's because they're fucking true, you know? So rather than, like, oh, dude, thinking about it, like, yeah, my quads are fucking small compared to my upper body. Fuck. Right? Instead of seeing that and being upset by it, right? flip your mind around and be like, dude, I got a lot of work ahead of me, but once I get some big ass legs, this is going to be sick. Like, and I know it's easier said than done. It's not like you can just do that. But the more you can kind of think about that in kind of a little bit more of a motivating, kind of exciting way, dude, the more fun you're going to fucking have. Even when I have a shit lift, I feel like shit. Maybe I got trashy sleep, dehydrated because I had to like do a bunch of exams. Or I procrastinated a bunch of homework so I had to catch up on it or whatever. Right? Even if I'm like not well prepped, once I finish the lift and I'm more pumped than I usually am, I still get a fucking little dopamine spike. I'm like, oh yeah. And it's almost extra cool because I'm like, dude, the odds were kind of against me today. Even though, you know, I, I probably just should have been more responsible and you know, got my sleep and studied more responsibly with my time and whatever else. But look. Let's not think about it like that. Right? Let's just say the odds were against me today, but I still get a badass lift. And then like do a side chest. Come on. That is gonna be way cooler. You know. The dudes who are killing it smile the biggest. And in a way, I think in some things in life, you can fucking fake it till you make it. So every time you see your pump and you are legit pumped, be happy about it.
because you have done something to progress. And the more you do it, and the more excited you get about it, then just you're going to be constantly increasing your effort level. You're probably going to watch more videos about it and like learn more and fucking, you know, be, be a better lifter in general. Dude, come on. I, I did a whole rant about this before. Right? I think out of anything in life, being good at something, or kind of, imp not even being good, like, relative to other people, like, whatever. You know, fucking comparison is the thief of joy. But improving at something, right, and actually making gains, which you recognize yourself, and you realize there's a tangible result to, you know, a period of effort that you've been doing for maybe months or weeks or years, right? That's fucking fun. So, take with that what you will. Uh, a lot of the times, like... When people, when people post videos where it's about, like, you know, self-improvement and, like, oh, you know, visualize where you want to be and manifest. Ah. I mean, I love that shit, but I know it sounds kind of fucking cheesy, especially if you're kind of being, like, forced to listen to it. So with this sort of thing, it's not something that, which you can kind of have pushed on you. You know, you sort of have to be motivated to be in that mindset already. So, whether or not you got a little fired up from this whole little rant, hopefully you did. That'd be fucking cool. But plan for tonight is go home and do some homework, which I put off all week. Uh, I'm going to have to stop at Kroger afterwards and get some steaks, some milk, some eggs. Uh, what else? I don't know what else. A variety of other treats for sure. You know, cram down a bunch of calories, proteins from good sources, meats, dairy products, eggs. Love it. And then a variety of sweets and treats. I'm sure I might get a four pack of uh, blueberry muffins, 450 calories each. And they'll probably all be gone before night's end. Before bedtime, I'm going to go from having a full pack of four muffins to zero. So, eat your food, do your lifts, do your cardio. You get the gist. I say this every time. Come on. I think we're starting to get the deal by now. I hope so, at least. So, that's all I got. I'll fucking see you tomorrow for back day. And I might add, I might add side delts to back day. I'm not sure. Because I, um... I want wider delts for sure. Like from the front, I want my shoulders to be a bit rounder. In like a double bicep shot, my front delts peak up high enough. My rear delts are kind of low enough. Like I don't see it as a weak point. But bigger side delts would not mind. But then again, I guess I've also got to remember I wouldn't mind bigger everything. So that almost goes without saying. But yeah, that's it. I'll see you next time.